One of my favorite things about the Enneagram is it gives you a simple way of understanding the core motivations of a large group of people, then provides a variety of ways to narrow down the more particular motivations of that group's individuals. For example, the group made up of fives all share a fear of incompetence. However, no one has the same exact way of seeing the world, hence the existence of wings and instinctual variants, which are tools that serve to understand specific ways that fear can manifest. In my opinion, the instinctual variants are the most useful in this regard. But I've thought that about enough tools and enough systems to know I only believe them more useful because I understand them more. Hence the reason I am making a video about instincts instead of a video about wings. With that said, I would like to present some cursory descriptions of the three instincts to provide a framework for those new to the concept and to refresh memory for everyone else. The self-preservation instinct is, according to Riso and Hudson, most concerned with individual survival. The social instinct, on the other hand, is most concerned about the group, whereas the sexual instinct is most concerned about relationships with individuals. The self-preservation instinct is the most consistent with the primary motivation of fives. As fives belong to the fear triad, they, like sixes and sevens, are especially concerned with protecting themselves. Unlike sixes and sevens, fives protect themselves by hoarding resources, whether that be information, time, energy, valuables, etc. So self-preservation simply accentuates these tendencies which all fives share. The social and sexual instincts, which are primarily concerned about others, are in direct opposition of the fives' main type. With the similarities between self-preservation and their main type, fives have a habit of believing their strongest function is self-preservation, but as fives, they will always be protective of themselves, no matter their dominant instinct. I, for a very long time, believed I was SPSX. In other words, I believed my strongest instinct to be self-preservation and my weakest to be social. I have recently concluded my stack is the exact opposite. My instincts, from strongest to weakest, are social, sexual, and self-preservation. A five with weak self-preservation may be inclined to study things society accepts as intellectual. For example, they might choose to read Moby Dick instead of Twilight because they think people take the former more seriously. To further explain this, I'll make up an omniscient being who, as one who is all-knowing, is able to make an objective list of the best to worst novels that have ever been written. To emphasize the fictional nature of this particular deity, the novel at the top of its list is Twilight. This random girl named Georgia, however, who is not omniscient and therefore possesses opinions, puts Twilight toward the bottom of her version of the list. The fact is that, no matter the contents of Twilight, its quality is most dependent on society's perception of the, the content, as none of us possess the ability to objectively score writing. So even though the deity knows Twilight is the best novel, the people who use Goodreads still think it's one of the most overrated stories. Similarly, people find some knowledge more valuable than others. Social fives are especially aware of this dynamic. The social instinct makes them hyper aware of their position in a group, and of the impressions their various studies might give others. So, social fives are sometimes the coldest fives, especially when the sexual instinct is weakest. This is because the social and self-preservation instincts work together to make a five focused on group dynamics and their own protection, often taking up the role of observer. Fives with the social sexual stack can be cold as well, but are sometimes the exact opposite. There is very little in between for them. If they are comfortable somewhere, they will utilize their social instinct as an outlet for their sexual instinct, wanting to form connections with everyone around them. They can appear very gregarious and friendly, but as soon as they're uncomfortable, they close off entirely, often growing incredibly quiet, along with trying to lessen their physical presence. This is because of their core desire to be competent, in situations where they cannot gauge the expectations of people around them, or where the expectations seem to be constantly changing, they reason the only way to avoid making social mistakes is to not socialize at all. This is the stack most sensitive to rejection. The sexual social stack is less sensitive to social rejection in general, but still incredibly sensitive to rejection from loved ones. Because fives withdraw when feeling threatened, social and sexual fives might withdraw from relationships completely when they believe they've misstepped. For example, if a sexual social five accidentally makes a close friend angry, they might disappear from the relationship. This is the same for social sexual fives, although with the social instinct first, they are inclined to disappear not just from relationships, but social environments when they have erred. They are unlikely to approach you a second time if you did not react favorably the first time. This is important to keep in mind, for social sexual fives might appear on the surface to have integrated to eight, 
but often it's simply the pull of their instincts that makes them seem less withdrawn. With this all in mind, I would actually argue the stack which opposes the five's main type most is social sexual. The sexual instinct, after all, has to do with individual relationships, and it's very characteristic of fives to form only a few close relationships in order to preserve time, energy, and personal space. Yet despite how outgoing social sexual fives can be when comfortable, they are want to listen more than they talk, even if they literally say more. In other words, they often focus conversations around other people, which means they usually know more about their peers than their peers know about them. Thank you very much for watching, and most importantly, take good care of yourself.